with us now is Robert Greenwald. Robert Greenwald is a producer, director, political activist, and the Brave New Films and Brave New Foundation founder and president. Welcome to Connect the Dots. Thank you. Good to be with you again. Thank you. I'm always inspired to call you for our show, but I was particularly excited about it because I just watched your video, Koch Brothers Exposed. It was short, but it was incredibly clear that there is no depth to which they are not willing to sink to stop the American people from voting if they feel that the American people are not going to vote their way. Discuss the video with us and tell us how much of a danger you feel that the Koch brothers are to the voters in light of the tremendous victory we had last Tuesday night. The Koch Brothers Exposed campaign, which has been ongoing for about seven months now, and we've done eight or nine different videos, exposing them on trying to destroy Social Security, exposing them on the fact that they were working to resegregate the schools in North Carolina, exposing them through Georgia Pacific, where they literally, Lila, not figuratively, literally we have the evidence on film of how Georgia Pacific is causing people in that community to die from cancer, a poor African-American community. It's one of the most powerful videos we've ever done. And then the one that you're referring to that we just released, Koch Brothers Exposed, makes the connection between the Koch Brothers, who fund a group called ALEC, which creates the laws and legislations and the ideas to suppress and prevent people from voting. And, you know, it tends to be an abstract idea, but what we did with the voting video, as we've done with all of us, we put a face on it. We went out and found people who literally, the United States of America, are going to be denied the right to vote because of this legislation. Now, I saw this video before the election results came in on Tuesday night. And, of course, in four different areas, the only areas in which there was voting, as a matter of fact, in Ohio, in Maine, in Mississippi, and North Carolina, in each one of these areas, the progressive Democrats, I mean, you can't put it any other way, won the elections. As a result of the elections on Tuesday, overwhelmingly, Ohio overturned the right wing's efforts to stop unions from organizing when it came to government jobs. In Maine, same-day registration and voting was reaffirmed. Segregation was stopped in North Carolina. In Mississippi, this hideous anti-abortion act, which would have stopped a woman from having an abortion, even if having a baby was going to kill her, was stopped. So... The people rose and the people won. Now, my question to you is, did we overreact to some of the terrible rules that the Republicans came down with when it came to voting? I mean, people had to present a photo ID, which they had no way to get their hands on. There were polling booths that hadn't opened. They tried every trick in the book, and it didn't work. How is that possible? Well, remember a couple of things. One of the things I've been most impressed with with the Koch brothers, as much as I detest what they stand for, is they think about these things in long term. This was one election last night, and in fact, in Mississippi, going forward, they passed a piece of, it was on the ballot, that will make it harder for people to vote. So voting suppression, we're just beginning to see the early impact of that, because it takes multiple election cycles of deterring people, making it harder, you know, keeping them away from the polls. And we know it's particularly directed at people of color, young people, and senior citizens. So the fact that last night was a wonderful night to celebrate on progressive policy, in no means, in no means, does this mean that threat is in any way extinguished or diminished what the Koch brothers and their ilk are doing. They are in this year after year, and we all too often get excited about one particular election when that's not going to be the solution. But this is rather remarkable, don't you think? Because in every single one of these instances, let me say it again, polls were closed. People weren't able to vote because they couldn't find the proper photo ID. They did everything possible to stop people from voting if they were going to, in fact, vote the right way. I mean, Huckabee actually did a commercial in which he told people to take the air out of their neighbors' tires or to burn down their houses or to do whatever was necessary to stop them from voting if they weren't going to vote according to the Republican dictate. And look what happened. Yes, but let me again, 
This was one election in a few states, Ohio particularly, critically important. I don't want to minimize it for the workers there, for the union members and the incredible middle class that they were trying to destroy. But they will not stop. They are not just focused on elections. To the Koch brothers' credit, as opposed to many progressives, they think about it as a long-term strategy, and they don't think about it just as elections. They think about it from the point of view of funding ideas. In our Koch Brothers Social Security video, you literally see they fund think tanks who put out papers. They then fund pundits to talk about it. They then fund grassroots, and they fund politicians. So you see them all using the same language about Social Security, all of it funded by the Koch Brothers. Okay. And we're on the defense around Social Security. Many of the victories last night were critically important, but they also came about because the right wing went out and pushed and took steps forward. We were playing defense. We pushed them back. but We did not make progress towards the kind of society we all want, which is more egalitarian, fairer, uh, not spending billions of dollars on wars. And that's the job we have ahead of us. Well, we don't ever seem to move forward, certainly in anything but baby steps. But at least we plugged the hole in the dike there you know, for the moment. Now, people aren't aware of what the Koch brothers make of their products. And is anything being planned really to hit them where they live when it comes to money? I mean, for example, are you thinking about a boycott, perhaps? Yes, we are. Boycotts are an incredibly important tool. We've seen them used well on getting some of the rotten apples off the air by going after the sponsors. But you need serious planning. You need to have a way to get the word out, and you need to be able to impact them. It's never easy, but yes, we are focusing in on some of their better-known products and putting together the pieces and the coalition that would work with Koch Brothers Exposed so that people could really have something to do and really be pushing back. And from that point of view, you know, the momentum is great. The fact that in North Carolina, where through Americans for Prosperity, they talk for years about how, in fact, the schools should be quote, neighborhood schools, which means resegregating them. Well, they were defeated there. We're going to be pushing back on them around these voter suppression laws. And as a part of all of this, I think a boycott will be an important tool letting them and others, because this is you and your audience well knows, they're not the only ones who we have to go after, letting them know we're not going to continue to give you our money and have you use it against us. And in conjunction with the boycott that you are planning Let's sort of kick it off a little bit on our show by mentioning some of the products that we can stop buying right now. First, there's the Georgia Pacific consumer products like Angel Soft, Quilted Northern and Soft and Gentle Toilet Paper, Brawny Paper Towels. That's something that I've been buying that I will never buy again, Brawny Paper Towels. Any of the Dixie Plates, bowls and napkins, any of them, Sparkle. Vanity Fair and Z napkins, that's Vanity Fair napkins, not the magazine, and all of Georgia Pacific's paper products. So I'll mention that a few times on our show, and perhaps our audience would like to jot them down. Yes, I think Georgia Pacific I particularly want to call attention to, because if you go to Koch Brothers Exposed, either the website or the Facebook page, you will see one of our most recent videos, which shows this Georgia Pacific plant in Arkansas, and the horrific awful toll it takes on this poor African-American community, and you see people on camera who are sick, who have cancer, and are literally pleading and challenging the Cokes to stop the pollution that is killing them and their friends and relatives. Robert Greenwald, before we leave you, we've been very enthusiastic about the occupiers and their movement, and we think that they are largely responsible for the victories that we enjoyed last Tuesday night. What's your opinion? I couldn't agree more. I think it's great what the occupiers have done in general. I think it's great what they've done in specific. And it's also very important, Lila, because it's a good example of what happens when you work on a social movement and you just don't put all your time and energy and money into getting some hack official elected. We need social movements. They drive change. They make a difference. And we can't put every bit of energy just into this bill of goods we frankly have accepted. And we need to change that everything should be electoral. You build a movement, civil rights, peace movement, women's movement, labor movement. None of them stood around waiting for the perfect candidate, as the Occupy movement is doing. So we've also been inspired by them. 
We have a new campaign called Who Are the 1%. We're asking people to suggest. We've had thousands of suggestions. We're going to have voting about it, which is an effort to support our friends in the Occupy movement. Now, last question. We know that there is a special committee in Congress consisting of six Democrats from both houses, three and three, and six Republicans. And they have been really mandated, this super congressional committee, to decide what to do about the economy. And 60 Democrats have actually sent a letter to them and said, put everything on the table, including Medicare. And so now they're anticipating cutting Medicare by $400 billion. What is your opinion of this? Well, it's an obscenity of the worst kind. It makes no sense when there are very simple measures in terms of cutting some unnecessary military weapons, in terms of bringing back the Bush tax cuts that would cover those holes. But it's another indication, Lila, of why the Occupy movement and social movement is important, because those are Democrats. Those are people that, you know, many people fought to get into office, and they are behaving horribly, uh, partly as a result of the Koch brothers' messaging that we have, you know, this deficit problem, which of course we don't, and that we should let the banks off scot-free, which we can't do anymore. So it's, to me, another example of why we should support Occupy, we should support social movement, and we've got a work cut out for us. And we should stop buying brawny paper towels Today. and Vanity Fair napkins and Dixie cups. Right now. Robert Greenwald, thank you so much for joining us and for brave new films. We don't know what we would do without both of you. Thank you.